with Nate McKinnon sustaining an injury that's going to keep him out, was it a good idea for him to punch people? Or maybe should he have chosen another route to fix his disputes? We're going to talk about that and much more on today's episode of Locked On NHL. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, you are listening or watching Locked on NHL, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Thank you for making today's show your first listen of the day. Starting your day off right with some Western Conference Wednesday chatter. My name is Sarah Avampato, one half of your Western Conference Wednesday team, also host of Locked on Los Angeles Kings, and as always, joined by Jess Bamasto, host of Locked on Calgary Flames. As we look at the latest going on in the Western Conference today, we're going to look at Nate McKinnon did it oops. We're going to talk about him today, and we're going to talk about the latest fallout from the Evgeny Dadanov saga, as there may be some changes afoot for the NHL. But let's start out with Nathan McKinnon. Jess, what did Nathan do this time? So he, he to be fair, he was defending his teammate. It was defending his teammate after uh, Matt Dunba threw a very questionable hit to send uh, Ranton and down on the ice and his neck doing the wonderful whiplash. And then he, um, he being Nathan McKinnon, decided to pull a Will Smith, but with a closed fist and start beating up uh, kind of known as fake tough guy, Matt Dunba. Uh, not great. This is like the second time this season McKinnon has injured himself and, you know, accidents happen, but when these are both injuries uh, that have caused you to miss time, especially now they're thinking this could be a hand fracture. Mm -hmm. Number one, how hard were you punching? (laughs) Like that, ow. Um, And number two, like you're putting more than just yourself in jeopardy yeah. here because i don't know fractures if they don't need surgery take like six to eight weeks to ha- uh, heal yeah that's the like the biggest thing for me is i mean well a we, we've seen the avalanche can get along just fine without any of their stars and i feel like literally all of their players could sit out the rest of the season and the avalanche would still be like terrifying. So, okay. I'm sure they'll be fine without him for however long he's out, but like a, was that the right reaction? B maybe Nate McKinnon, like the Colorado avalanche employ Curtis McDermott. Right. Nate McKinnon doesn't need to be, I mean, they also employ like Nazem Kadri. Like, there are guys on that team yeah. who will punch people. So, Nate McKinnon doesn't have to, which is the whole point of employing people who are punchers. Right. Like, I know that we've kind of shifted away from like enforcers in the league, but there are definitely still players out there who will go and rock someone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when necessary. Yeah. Uh, now, I know in the middle of all this internet drama we have discussed uh, is violence ever necessary? And, you know, I I don't have the answer to that. I have a hockey podcast. I don't think I'm the right demographic to be (laughs) preaching violence is the answer. (laughs) But there are ways to quote unquote retaliate and get even with your opponent for hurting one of your teammates and one of your top scorers, if not your top scorer. Um, and it doesn't need to be handled by Nate McKinnon. Like you said, there are players on the avalanche who will do that without jeopardizing too much. Yeah. Like, 
I put up the roster for who was active in this game. Um, Curtis McDermott played. He played seven minutes and 38 seconds, which I'm sure was a good use of everyone's time. Uh, Josh Manson, who they just acquired from the Ducks, is also a noted guy who will not be afraid to punch people. I feel like both Jack Johnson and Eric Johnson have probably gotten into fights. Um, they've gotten yeah. awesome Kadri. Um, like... I feel like Cogliano has probably punched a person or two in his career. Like there were options. And so it's like, on the one hand, like I, like I respect Nate McKinnon for like standing up for his teammate and like heat of the moment, like whatever I, I get it. But ideally you don't want, like you don't want your star players doing that because this is what happens. This is right. now he's out and sure. Colorado can kind of like weather, you know, his absence, but do you want him out like long term? No. Like what? No, <laughs> it's not good. I I'll, I will happily take that. Right? Yeah. They don't they play the flames like it's so literally I'm sure Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you're real bummed about. Like, I am. You know, you know it's devastating. <laughs> to have Nathan McKinnon and Gabe Landeskog out. Oh well, yeah, just real, just real tough. Yeah, real tearjerker there. But you know. <laughs> We just talked. I just talked about this on Locked On Flames last week when Sean Ma- uh, Sean Monahan was scratched and kind of like how his injuries have derailed his career. I have this awful feeling in my gut, and for once, it is not heartburn, but <laughs> because it is so close to the playoffs. What if Nathan McKinnon's like, "I'm fine. Mm-hmm. I can just take some medicine." I can take some Toradol shots. Mm-hmm. I hate the idea that that is a reality that we have seen across professional sports. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that that's a reality that we have to think about, like, these players because they have so much grit and so much mm-hmm. heart and passion for the game that nothing stops them, not yeah. even a mangled hand, you know, are the avalanche in a position to say no Mm -hmm. one of our best players and one of the best players in the league you need to sit down and heal Mm -hmm. and yeah is he going to listen like probably not um we'll have some more thoughts about this coming up next but uh, i believe you have some snacks to tell us about you know that i love talking about snacks and um, I actually just placed an order for these snacks. Uh, I got some cinnamon churro puffs. And yes, you know that we are talking about Built Bars. Built Bars are a delicious tasting protein bar that I think everybody could benefit from. Whether you have a sweet tooth that you are working to uh, curb or are just a fan of getting in some extra protein, I, uh, Built Bars are a delicious option for you. They are covered in 100% chocolate, and yes, the puffs are too, and they're low calorie, high protein, low carbs, high fiber, really good for you. They're one of those things that taste like they should be terrible for you, but there's actually a lot of good health benefits to them, (laughs) and most of the bars contain uh, less than 150 calories. They have four grams of sugar uh four net carbs and about 17 grams of protein so that's a great way to get protein into your day i am very excited and looking forward to my churro puffs and you can get yours too at built.com and you can use promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off of your order promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off of your order at built.com All right. So, of course, we don't have a timetable yet for Nate McKinnon's uh, return. Uh, Basically, all they've said is, you know, that they're worried that this could be the level of concern is high, according to Jared Bednar, uh, the coach of the Avalanche. And, you know, I, I think you bring up a good point about, like, will McKinnon himself feel like he needs to rush back at some point? Um, you know, obviously the Avalanche are getting into the playoffs. Like they haven't clinched a playoff spot yet, but I feel like they could lose every game and they'll be fine. Um, uh, I think they'd be okay. Yeah, I think I think they'll be okay. Um, so you know, obviously the Avalanche get into the playoffs, 
you know, I, I think about last year with the the lightning and how Steven Stamkos was out and out and out and out. And then he came back for that one game, like literally like one shift. Yeah, basically, that's right. And then re injured himself and was out the rest of the time. And, you know, st- you know Stamkos kind of you know felt like he had to come back and like give the team a spark and whatever like imagine a scenario where Ve- or, you know, Vegas like I mean, yeah say Colorado has to play Vegas and right. you know they they get down again uh, last you know retribution from you know Vegas knocking them out previously it's an ugly series and like McKinnon feels like he needs to come back to like jazz the team up um, yeah, what is the likelihood that he is going to rush back from an injury that the team is going to allow him? You, you'd think they'd want to have more care with their stars, but this is hockey. We, we <laughs> <laughs> their money, their pawns, right. all mm-hmm. of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I completely forgot about the Stamkos incident. Uh, honestly, I feel like this is just something that happens far too often, and mm-hmm. you care about. Uh, players, you know, like Patrice Bergeron, like there's yeah. this, there's this stupid meme <laughs> graphic thing that goes around every playoff because mm-hmm. NBA playoffs and NHL playoffs mm-hmm. kind of, they run right along the same time, and it's always Patrice Bergeron played with a punctured lung and three <laughs> broken ribs, mm-hmm. a fractured skull, or like yeah. whatever, and it's right. like, and then like the picture below, it's like. LeBron James had to be carried off the court because of a broken ankle. Right. Yeah. 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 He should have. Like, yeah. He should have been carried off the court. Like, you do not get a prize mm-hmm. for playing through your injuries. You might yeah. you might win the Stanley Cup, but, you know, like, is there really any benefit to being 25, 26 years old and not mm-hmm. being able to bend down and pick up your kid? Right. Like, and like you know, I feel like, especially like, you know, this isn't like Nate McK- McKinnon like has a rib injury. Like right. this is his hand, most likely it's allegedly. You need to play right. Hockey. Like as one of the most gifted players in this league with the puck. Like it's like I don't know if you remember. Like back when before Connor McDavid turned pro obviously like his like last season in juniors or whatever he got in a fight and I think he ended up like punching the glass yeah and broke his hand and was out for a long time and it's like why are you fighting Connor McDavid like this is pointless um number two why are you hitting glass what do you what do you think's gonna happen right well because he's not good at fighting that's why he hit the glass (laughs) like (laughs) but yeah it's just it's frustrating to see you know, there's there's always so much talk about like fighting in hockey and like you know should this or that happen, um, and like I, I I get it that you're gonna get mad about something, someone's gonna lay a hit that you don't like, and you're gonna feel like you have to respond. Um, I feel like you know basically everyone from the team who was interviewed or you know asked about this, um, even Miko Rantanen said like he appreciated Nate McKinnon standing up for him. Um, Eric Johnson said Nate McKinnon's a character guy, but the team in general would rather not see him not fighting. Um, Jared Bednar says like, you know, I'd prefer the top guys don't fight, but you know, I get it that sometime they're going to feel it's necessary. Like everyone seems to be kind of aligned. Like we get it. But right. all you had to do was send out Curtis McDermott the next shift that Dumba was on the ice. That's and all you had rocky to do. Rocky shit. Like, excuse my language. Sorry if you're listening with kids in the car, but like, <laughs> like, yeah. and I don't really like the idea of like repeated punches to the head. I think mm-hmm. anybody would say, hey, that's really not that great. Um, but like, you have to do what you have to do. And mm-hmm. Um, especially just, I don't know, I don't know. this s- sport is so bad in so many different ways. <laughs> like there's, there should be a way that they can just go into like those little hamster ball, like right. you can just fight it out that right. way. Like, I, I don't know. We got to figure out something, um, a little bit more head brain trauma friendly, wrist friendly, mm-hmm. um, uh, we just get it. Yeah. got to figure yeah. something out. Yeah. There has to be a balance between standing up for your teammates and, you know, showing people you can't mess with us 
and like the fights for no reason or the fights of your star player who is now hurt right. when you already have one of your other star players out of the lineup too like you don't know the timetable for that either right. because what was it knee surgery yeah no 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 it's not good no. so like it stinks for the avalanche who are going to be without nate mckinnon it stinks for people who want to watch those games because right. he's a fun player to watch it stinks for nate mckinnon who, right like, probably wishes he hadn't just allegedly maybe possibly broken his hand right like yeah. i know when i was a kid i used to i used to wear glasses all the time and i would like adjust them and mm -hmm. sometimes like the little nose piece would break and it's like if I didn't do that. It uh -huh. wouldn't have happened. And, and I wouldn't have to explain this to my parents. Right. I wouldn't have to face the repercussions. Yeah. Now I'm sure Nate McKinnon is kind of also in the similar line of thinking, like, did I have to do that? Right. What if I didn't Someone else do have done this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like there's just, just so many other ways that things could have been handled. Yeah. Just make smarter choices, guys. And make smarter choices. Not it's really not that hard, I promise yeah. you. No, it isn't. Well, speaking of smarter choices, uh, the NHL may uh, be fixing possibly uh, their incredibly broken system for tracking uh, the uh, no trade nonsense. So uh, I believe you had the latest on that one. What is going on with this whole hot nonsense? Yeah. So basically, you know, I was just minding my own business as one does. Uh, and looking up stories for today and cruising NHL.com. And I happened to see that the NHL and the NHL uh, Players Association are in kind of an agreement that something needs to be done about this NHL <laughs> central registry things kind of getting lost in the shuffle of these no trade clauses, these no movement lists and whatnot. And they're working on a new requirement for no trade clause documentation to be filed sim simultaneously with new contracts at the registry. And we talked last week about how this there's just an office, probably a fax machine, where all of these <laughs> things just... <laughs> come through. And one thing that makes me really happy is this quote from uh, Bill Daly, who says, we've drafted a letter of agreement, which we will share with the Players Association probably later today. So I expect a resolution. And that, you know, that's great. It's great to see <laughs> that they're working with the players mm -hmm. uh, and not against them for kind of what seems like the first time. Right. Um, and it's just very good that this happened um you know I, i'm sure that the ducks kind of wish the trade wasn't voided but uh you know sometimes you know a domino has to fall for things to change and I, number one i don't understand why they're not like filed together at the same time right like i'm thinking of like when you're in school and you hand in all of your work and it's all stapled together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, like, that's just what I'm picturing. Yeah. Now, I'm sure these are all typed out and, like, whatever. But why, like... Yeah. Why would you do it separately? Yeah. I think, like, the one... The thing that I saw, which, like, kind of makes sense, but, like, also, if it is true, I'm like, this doesn't speak well for, like, anyone who works there, is that, you know, they're concerned about the contents of the no-trade lists or whatever getting out like getting leaked but and, which like th there is you know like we do always hear it does always get leaked like oh so and so has a 10 team no trade thing but like right. the details of it usually don't come out until like late so like i get that they want to minimize like the number of places this information is so that like someone can't go and like anonymous anonymously send a cap friendly or something here's you right. know so-and-so's no trade list but like if you don't trust your employees to not leak that you have a bigger problem i think right i was just gonna say like you don't trust your employees you don't employ trustworthy people mm -hmm. I, sarah i think you need to go and do a workplace investigation right? and find out what find out some good details yeah 
Like, I, the, the stuff, it gets out anyway. Um, right. Like, closer to yeah, you know, the deadline someone, or whatever. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's it's just totally boggled my mind that there is there wasn't already a, a way to, like, organize all this even if it's like okay i have deputized this one person right like and they and have you are the person the yeah like, right like, like everything yeah like bob smith in central registry congratulations you're now tasked with like keeping all of those on foul somewhere right. and like no one else should have ac- access to them bob smith is the only one who should know at the nhl like if it gets out and it's not from the agent or the team you can go we have a limited number of places it could have come from like right. this, this seems like a simple solution and i like what you said that like for once they're working with the players on it um because you would think the players would want this too like no one wants to be evgeny dad not part two no. like <laughs> like there's gotta be like a level of embarrassment as an mm-hmm. agent i feel like because you know you're representing some of you know, the best talent. Like, even if you just go on to like a random like agency's website, you see mm-hmm. some of the stars that they represent and you're like, oh, that's really cool that my favorite player who is only 22 years old is also represented by this super cool agency and the super mm-hmm. cool agent. Like you're tasked with, you know, I don't want to say it's a simple job to be yeah. in because there's a lot of numbers that go into that. <laughs> but you were tasked with writing down 10 teams five teams seven mm-hmm. whatever it may be and you couldn't do that yeah it's like, just, that's embarrassing it just that's, blows my mind right like the, yeah this this has a simple solution this is something they should be able to fix very easily so it doesn't happen again um i mean just the fact that like just the fact that it happened like just kills me like it, so many things went wrong. Um, Dad, not by the way, in case anyone hasn't been following up on what he's been up to, um, obviously returned to the lineup for Vegas. Um, in the two games that he's played since the trade deadline, um, he has five points. <laughs> he has two he goals. An overtime three. winner. Yes. Like over the weekend or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's... <laughs> I, I mean, I love that he is just, he just got back out there and is playing. He's just like, right. I'm going to do my job. It was a bad situation, whatever. But you're like, man, like Vegas tried to trade this guy. Like I get that he's paid too much for what he has produced and that Vegas right. needed to clear money. But like, he's, he's doing all you could have hoped from him. Like I would have wanted to be super petty. So congrats to him for being a better adult than me. Right. Like <laughs> see, I saw a tweet and it was like, Vegas did a smart thing. Because they wanted to trade this guy who wasn't, like, producing, wasn't scoring. <laughs> and then he comes back with spite. Mm-hmm. Now he's performing better. Yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. Like, that's not really a tactic. Like, it's no. not really something you should do. <laughs> no. And then they immediately put someone else on LTIR to clear yeah. $5 million. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to chuck a shoe <laughs> somewhere and it's not gonna be fun and it's not like I was just so frustrated I was like wow who could have seen this coming mm-hmm. and and it was Riley what's his face who yeah, we could the, Riley, the Riley Smith months. yeah the, the, that time it was the right one but I just it why isn't there like a locked google sheets right that it's two so people are tasked with. You have your Eastern Conference, you right? have your Western Conference. It shouldn't be hard. Put them on a spreadsheet. Yeah. Shouldn't That's all hard. you need to do. And it... Uh, why Why am I not running things? <laughs> like, I am just a silly girl who's one semester away from her PR degree <laughs> who watches men on blades skate. Right. Right. Like, and I have a better <laughs> resolution. I don't think this is how things are supposed to go. Right. It just, it's <sighs> so, I feel like everything, and like we talked about it last week with the like, you literally have to call. Yes. The, what, like, and you have to sit on hold until they get to you. Like, it's so antiquated. Like, right. The, the, the processes just like are bad. <laughs> Do you remember when you used to have to call for movie times? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's what that reminds me of yeah yeah like 
please press one if you yeah. would like to hear yeah. this Or it's show. like, yeah, you have to, or like when you're a kid and like your parent had to call like to say you're going to be absent or going to be late yes. or something, which I feel like my mom always forgot to do. And then they were like, excuse me, where's your daughter? She's literally, like, um, oh, we're here. sending truancy officers right? out. Like, okay. she's puking. Like, I, <laughs> do you want her at school? No. But yeah. Like, it's so, it's like, it's so backwards. Come on, NHL. It is the, it is the year 2022. I just, I know that that place is riddled with fast machines. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh, absolutely. You probably get checked once a day in the paper. Just, oh. <laughs> right? There's like a paper jam. There's one yeah. guy who knows how to fix it. Like, My worst nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, <sighs> I, I, I have always learned to not show any sort of competence when you're anywhere near a printer, fax machine, or anything, because then suddenly you will become the person who has to fix it all the time. No, nope, then, I. Then you're done. Even at home. What yeah, had, what's the printer I've never seen what, one what, before. what is this error code that i've already googled means <laughs> can you fix it nope I'm bye yeah sorry oh <laughs> I, I didn't thought. know it was broken i'm so sorry office mates <laughs> so sorry yeah. like oh i thought things just weren't printing mm. right oh mm. i haven't had to print anything so yeah. i don't know it's been blinking oh, i thought i was just oh. supposed to do that <laughs> doesn't that mean it's on yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we can't wait to see how the NHL either fixes this or messes it up and makes it worse. I'm excited. Either way is a pretty good option. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes when they have all of their, their meetings coming up next. That is about it for us today. Uh, but before we go, we did want to acknowledge some of the, the latest news in the hockey world, which was Monday. Uh, the Ottawa Senators announced that Eugene Melnick, the owner of the team, had passed away um, after an illness. Uh, and this was, you know, kind of a surprise. He had been ill years ago. He had a, a liver transplant in 2015. But, um, you know, hit late, any later news was all just sort of, you know, rumors or suspicion of, you know, he hasn't been around as much as usual. He hasn't been involved. And he is a guy who... You know, for better or worse, I think you can ask 20 Senators fans what they think about him and you're going to get 20 different answers. Um, but he was involved. He had his his nose in lots of stuff um, and people had noticed he wasn't around lately. But um, obviously very sad for, you know, his family, for his loved ones and, uh, you know, any, anyone who knew him. And a big a big change for the Senators organization who now has some pretty big shoes to fill. So. Uh, all of our condolences and best wishes to uh, uh, the Melnick family, the senator's world, um, and, you know, life. Yeah, life's, life's brutal. rough. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, uh, unfortunate. it's yeah, unfortunate. And I just hope that, uh, you know. He he does have he does have a le he has a complicated legacy, as a lot of people have said. But you know he did yeah. do a lot of good um, for as frustrating as he was as an owner. I think uh, there are a lot of things that he did that uh, are worthy of being looked up to. So uh, our condolences to him. Um, Ian Mendez of the Athletic had a really good article, um, kind of pointing out the paradox that yeah. was Eugene Melnick. So. You know, the man was a character. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a pretty good way to a pretty good way to put it. Yeah, everyone has a different thought on him. So go and uh, if you are an athletic subscriber, go check that out because it was a pretty good piece looking at his uh, his legacy with the senators. So that is it for us today. I feel kind of bad and on a bummer note, but um, you know, it's been a while since we've had to do that. Yeah, so it was bad yeah. To happen again. Right. Go send us dog pictures or you know memes making yeah. fun of Vegas like always done um that's it for us today thank you so much for listening uh you can find me on twitter at right said sarah of course locked on kings available wherever you get your podcasts much like this podcast available on your favorite podcast app of choice and or youtube just where can folks find you uh you can find me on twitter at just belmosto and my show locked on flames wherever you get this show and locked on kings as well as youtube Awesome. So thank you so much for tuning in. There is, of course, great NHL content all week long here on this show uh, with our many awesome hosts across the network. We'll be back next Wednesday for more Western Conference chatter. Uh, so thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Locked on NHL, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs>